So there's a lot of misinformation out there when it comes to the field of software development. And one of the common things I notice is this misconception about what the role of a software developer actually is and what they do on a day-to-day -day basis. A lot of people seem to think that coding is the most important skill a software developer has. And when you get on the job, you are going to be heads down writing code almost nonstop 40 hours a week. And this could not be farther from the truth. So today I wanna to kind of walk through what early career, mid career, late career, software development day-to-day -day roles typically look like and how that's different than what you're gonna see on social media sites. I'm Eric Wise from Skill Foundry, where we teach people how to code the right way. Now, right off the bat, let's tackle the myth that programmers are writing code in the majority of their time for the work week. This is just not true. You do not write any code until you understand or have solved the problem. So what this means effectively for developers is that you spend a lot more time doing research, gathering requirements, looking at legacy code, testing things out, making implementation plans before you write the code. One of the biggest ways to write terrible application code is to just sit there and start spewing out code at a problem before you really understand it. Now, there are times when you will write code without understanding a problem because you have to explore the problem space, but nobody sits down writing code intended for production until they've done their research and until they understand the problem. So a larger chunk of programmers time is reading documentation and reading other people's code and making plans and going to meetings with stakeholders and writing specifications and figuring out what you want to do. Just like you wouldn't want to go to a surgeon who just started cutting without figuring out what they wanted to do first, coders do not write code until they know what they want to do and how they generally want to go about it. So now how much time a week do you actually spend coding? Well, it depends. It depends on where you're getting your specifications from, what level of coder you are. But in general, most people spend between 15 and 30 hours a week coding, depending on how good their specifications are. It can also be you figured out the problem, but it's a long problem to solve. So you've spent a lot of time up front solving the problem, and then you get to spend a lot of time coding. I have literally had weeks in my career go by where I haven't written any code at all because I'm debugging, I'm testing, I'm looking at things, I'm researching problems, and I just don't get a chance to code that week. That is normal and expected. And when it comes to learning how to code, this is something that always kind of jumps out at me from beginners and people just getting started in their journey is they'll say something along the lines of, oh, you know, I picked this one course because it's all video, because I really don't like to read. And I kind of sit there and like one eyebrow goes up and I'm like, if you don't like to read and study, I have some really bad news for you because reading and studying and thinking and writing down specifications is a huge part of programmers' jobs. In fact, they generally spend more time doing those activities than they do typing code into the keyboard. So if you're one of those people, it's one of the reasons why in my courseware, I do a lot of written material. There's videos too, but you have to get used to reading documentation and reading other people's code and applying the knowledge that you've read about. Because if you don't develop that skill, being a good professional developer is going to be very difficult for you. So now let's go through programming and time spent and duties by level. So you're an entry level or junior developer gone through, you've learned the basics, you got good enough to pass a coding interview and land that first job. What does your day-to-day -day look like? 
Well, the good news is that senior developers generally don't expect a lot out of you when you're a junior or entry level developer. They expect you to learn the patterns and learn the code base and really study how they do things and all the other things around the code that make you a good professional. They're going to bring you to stand up meetings. They're going to have you read documentation. And a lot of times they'll just ease you into the code base. So, you know, number one, when you're an entry level developer, you don't join a company and they say, hey, great, we're so glad to have another programmer. Here's some really interesting and challenging work. That just doesn't happen because they don't trust you yet. They want to see you accomplish little things. So a lot of times you start out just studying the code base and then they'll give you some opportunities to fix some simple bugs or make some simple changes like maintenance style requests that need to happen in the application. And as you prove yourself that you can do those simpler tasks and you gain that knowledge of the code base, they will start progressively giving you slightly more complicated and more interesting work. But you have to earn that. And this is something from back in the day when I was training boot camp students and they would go out in the wild and I'd reach out to them after six to 12 months and I'd say, hey, how's it going? And some of them would always be like, well, I don't know. You know, it feels like I'm just really not making an impact. And, and I'd always smile at him and be like, you're, you're not supposed to make an impact. You're an entry level developer. Nobody wants you to make an impact because any impact you would make without developing skills first is probably not going to be a positive one. You just have to earn your keep and take your lumps. This is just like apprenticeship in any other field. A blacksmith does not take on an apprentice and immediately let them work on the most interesting and crucial piece of armor for the Lord. No, you have to make like hammers and hoes and chisels for the local craftsmen and do a hundred daggers before you get to work on an ornate set of armor. And it's no different in programming than it is in any other vocation. So at that entry level, not as much coding as you would think. More self-improvement, study, practice, things like that if you're in a good environment. But then eventually you become a mid-level developer. And mid-level generally starts around two years to around 10 years of experience. And mid-level is actually where you tend to do the most coding. Because at the mid-level, you're mostly trusted to take tasks and complete them. You're not really making the big level decisions. You're not doing a lot of exploration of things. You're steadily improving your craft and, and you are the workhorse of the team. You're the one who's going to take the most tickets. You're going to accomplish the most work. That doesn't mean that you don't have to do all that research and stuff that I talked about before, because you are going to have to still go meet with stakeholders and the tasks that you're given will be a little bit more ambiguous than the ones that you would give entry level or junior developers. And that's really something about the progression in the career of programmers. The higher level you are, the more ambiguity you are expected to handle. So entry level junior people, everything is usually pretty well documented and laid out for them in a good environment. The mid-level people, they get pretty solid information, but they do have some latitude and, and some decision making that they can make about how they go about their tasks. And like I said, workhorse, they're going to spend probably 20 to 30 hours a week uh, writing code on a pretty regular basis. They're going to carry most of the load for the team. And the senior developers are going to be the ones kind of guiding them and checking them and, and mentoring them into the next tier. And that brings us to the senior level developers. Now, senior level developers, yes, they do write code and they're generally tasked with the stuff that is most crucial to get right. So when I was running a development team, my senior developers got to work on the things that would really impact a customer. Things like billing, things like their policy, anything that touches legal. You know, those are things, security, that senior developers are going to be involved in. They get the most interesting, challenging, and if it's wrong, dangerous work. 
Now, the senior developers also spend a lot of time doing research because as technology evolves, you might want to integrate some new things into your software stack. Well, the senior developers are the ones who get the opportunity to explore new frameworks and new things as part of their job. Now, as an entry-level, junior, mid-level person, you should have a solid curiosity and interest in things in the field, and you should be doing some exploration on your own time. But senior developers are the ones who generally get to spend a lot of work time exploring those concepts, trying them out, and figuring out what they want to bring into the formal software stack and what they want to avoid. And because of that, senior developers generally do not write as much production code as the mid-level developers do. It's just the stuff they do write is more complex, more impactful, and more necessary to be correct. And the senior developers are the ones for whom the amount of code they write on a weekly basis is really going to be variable. Because there's going to be some weeks because they are heavily involved in design and high level decisions where they're meeting with stakeholders and other technology team members just figuring out what to do. And they might be in meetings all week and not write any code. And they're also the ones that tend to get tapped for mentorship and code reviews. And when you're mentoring and reviewing code, you're not writing the code yourself. So again, you might not be putting your hands on the keyboard at all. But then of course, when there are complicated things to do that call for a senior developer's hands, you can be heads down and write a lot of code in a week or two or a month you know, those periods will come, but it tends to be very up and down. And that's one of the reasons why a lot of people who love writing code, they actually try to resist getting promoted into team lead and management style positions because those positions tend to take you out of the code a lot more. So if you find yourself in your earlier mid-career really enjoying writing code and not enjoying the other things, you should actually try to not get promoted and be really clear with your management and leadership team that you do not want those responsibilities because there are two pathways that open up as you become experienced in technology. There is the leadership pathway where you're spending a lot of time doing research and interacting with the other teams and the stakeholders more than you're writing code. And then there's the technical leadership role where you are primarily responsible for producing applications, maybe with a team under you, but you do have an opportunity if you communicate with your leadership to go one way or the other, or of course you can change jobs to try to keep your role shaped in the way you want it to be. Sometimes in that higher level of IT, a promotion is a bad thing. So for my aspiring and junior developers out there, my advice is to just be mindful. Yes, you have to become competent at coding, and that is a primary concern of yours when you're first learning and early on in your first job. But also realize that you need to have patience and realize that there is so much more to the job besides coding that makes you successful. The best coders are not always the most successful employees if they're weak at the other parts of the programmer role. So I hope that kind of dispels that myth, you know, what do programmers do? Do they, they have this picture in their head of somebody with their head down, just typing, typing, typing for eight hours a day. That's just not the reality of a, what a programmer does. And it's part of the reason why soft skills and communication skills are really important because a lot of your time is going to be spent interacting with other team members, both technical and not technical. So I hope that helps. Happy coding.